the purpose of the bio sketch is to give the reviewers a sense of who you are, what your background is, and most importantly, what you bring to this project that they feel that you should be funded for, which sets you apart from other people. So it's very important to have this um, in a really good presentation format, easy for uh, reviewers to understand your background, your expertise, and how uh, you can advance knowledge in this specific area. So um, I'm just going to sh show one document and uh, see. Quick share your screen. This uh, first one is the BioSketch instructions. And I think all of you have the BioSketch template. Um, if not, let me just minimize this one and um, let's see. This is the blank template that I'm putting up. And on top is um, the most current version. And just make sure that when you're looking for this BioSketch format, you find the date, uh, the correct date. The most recent version is the one that we've just put up here, which uh, says it's been approved from uh, November 16, 11, 16 to 10, 31, 2018. And this is really important because NIH keeps changing what it does and what they're looking for. So if you submit a previous version of it, they will simply kick off your project completely. So just make sure. The other thing to uh, ensure is, as you can see, it's limited to five pages. So um, when you submit online, anything that exceeds five pages is going to get truncated. So you need to keep that in mind. So uh, make sure that you're focused in what you present and how you present it. So I'm just going to go through, uh, it's pretty obvious, the first thing, uh, your name, um, your ERA Cummins username, which um, as you submit any grant to the NIH and some other agencies, you have this unique identifier called the ERA, which is the Electronic Records Access. And if you don't have it, you have to go through your sponsored programs, so either Marygrove or UDM, and they will have to get you that particular credential. So they work with the NIH, and this is a unique ID that follows you, even if you change institutions, you will have this associated with you. So um, this was instituted after I moved to Wayne State. So here I've just used my access ID so that it can be pulled up. So you know, whatever you, ch you choose to use, as long as you remember what it is. So make so sure that you keep something that you can recall. And uh, it's important because many times to try to retrieve it, is more headache than it's worth. So just make sure you note it somewhere. You can always get it from your sponsored programs as well as the NIH if you forget, but like I said, it makes you jump through hoops to get that. And in order to access anything in the NIH, you want to submit your proposal and even at submission, you're going to use your login information which will require your username first and foremost. And again, your uh, sponsored programs administration should be able to help you with that. The next thing, again, no-brainer, whatever your position slash title is. And then your education training is the next thing. And we'll go over each of these. Um, the other sections that are narrative as a personal statement, which is the most important thing that you need to work on. Uh, any positions and honors that you've held, what are your contributions to science, as well as additional information in terms of what other research support you've had or scholastic performance that you've, uh, you want to showcase. So I'm going to go, um, this other document that I had pulled up first is the instructions on where to find. They also have some samples that are available. Um, you know, all, all of those things are in here if you need more information than you think I'm providing here, but all of it should be readily available. So what I'm going to do is to show you a couple of examples of my own biosketch, so you can see. So um, as I mentioned to you, it's important that you look at uh, each biosketch that you submit has to be personalized to the project that you're working on. So um, I'll go through my uh, current biosketch for the Bill Grant of Purposes for Training. So you can see my name is here. 
I have my common username. My title is Professor of Pediatrics, and I'm also Associate Provost and Dean of the Graduate School. So those are the things that you need to put in, whatever you have. And again, just feel free to interrupt me if you have any questions at any time. Um, in the education and training, you start in chronological order and uh, go start with the first degree uh, and then move up to your doctorate or any other degrees that you have. You can see, um, you know, I have my degrees here, completion date by month and year, and the field of study. So uh, make sure you add all of those things. I'll come back to the personal statement in a minute, but the positions and honors that you've held, so um, you know, I'm putting mine in from postdoc onwards because those are the things that are more relevant, and whatever positions you've held in terms of employment, et cetera. Um, the other thing that is important is your experience in professional memberships, so they want to see how active you've been in the research and training environments. So I have listed each of these opportunities in the last uh, five to six years that I've participated in, because those are more relevant than going back you know, many years. So I would not go back more than seven, eight years, because that unless you've done something very seminal prior to that. So um, here it is, member of uh, you know, this graduate research education and training uh, committees for the uh, American Association of Medical Schools. Then I have the National Postdoctoral Association, because again, that's relevant to the research training of the things that I have chaired. Again, these are mainly chronological order. Um, all the other regional, national, things, if you've chaired anything that is important. So I've chaired several of these important committees, so I have all of these listed. Um, without going through each one, you can see what I mean by why these things indicate that I'm involved with research training. So um, these come down to, the, for example, the NIH-funded best grant, the NIH-funded bill grant. Uh, all the other associated activities that are important. So um, this particular grant was uh, that I prepared this personal statement for was for a biomedical and STEM research uh, training grant. So in order to write the personal statement for this to show why I should be investigator or co-PI or key personnel <coughs> or Anything that was important for this grant, uh, I had to showcase that particular thing. So for this, since it was training, I put everything that was training related. That was the important thing. So why me? So uh, I start with you know being a dissertation mentor and advisor for uh, all kinds of trainees. So that's important to show whom you have trained, what you have trained them for, and what your role in these were. So not in detail, but you know, whether you're a PI, or whether you're participating faculty, whatever your role in these uh, things was. Then the next thing was, what is my research, uh, what is my expertise in this? What is my track record? So I start with this. This is important, what, my track record of building training programs at Wayne State. Again, I've been here for uh, you know, 10 years, 12 years now. So what have I done in this? time frame, because that's really what they're looking at. So my first thing was I started uh, the first permanent director of the MD-PhD program, what all I did for that, what was unique and um, important for this. Um, <coughs> the fellowship writing a course for the MD-PhD students, why was that relevant? Because the students that went on to receive external fellowships and uh, you know the rate of success that we had compared to uh, the national rate of success. So 65% is huge because all the reviewers know that otherwise it's less than 25%. So that shows that I've had experience in training these kinds of students and uh, making them successful. So that sort of sets me apart. So this really is you showcasing. It's not you bragging, but you're showcasing yourself. So you do have to, um, you know, if you are very modest, make sure you do not let modesty get in the way here. Uh, the next thing was, you know, again, showing the range. Uh, postdoc office at Wayne State, 
and this was cross-institutional, and what I did here. Uh, you know, that led me to my associate dean position, um, how many students we manage, how many programs we're managing here, and what the graduate school is doing. So again, it gives the breadth of the experience I have. Um, you know, then I became dean, and how much I'm, uh, what kind of budgets I'm dealing with. Um, everything else is important, again, for the training of students. Um, then after that, you go into your professional relationships, societies, organizations, etc. what your role in those has been. So again, I've put in what I did for the great group, as I mentioned, American Association of Medical Colleges great group, what I did in all of these sections, uh, what, you know, how that was important, what I did with the National Postdoctoral Association, uh, the Midwest Alliance of Graduate Schools, and um, again, so this was a lot of professional development, I've brought in the professional career development opportunities, uh, the fellowship writing uh, program that we have, the bank of credentials, how we are providing all of these things, um, the grants I've had. So uh, this is talking about my NIH best grant, what we did there. Again, I'm highlighting that we are one of only 10 institutions to get this. So um, moving on to now the build grant, again, what is the bill grant about? What is my role? What are we doing in this? And then I'm also doing other things at Wayne State that are resulting in diversity efforts. So exactly what I'm doing here. And you know, if you have leadership experience in other places like urban serving universities, the association of uh, land grant universities, so all of those things uh, which resulted in the Biomedical Research Workforce Action Group shown that I chaired uh, those and I'm working towards that. So this establishes why I'm good for this type of a project and why I should be a key leader in a submission that requires this kind of a background for training of uh, you know, everybody involved in research training. So any questions before we move on? You can type in your questions too. Can we see them? So I'll give it a couple of minutes if you have questions. I have a question. Uh, this is Prasad. Hi, Prasad. Um, so it doesn't necessarily, if it's not biomedical related, but does so show some involvement in research and training or pipeline programs. Um, that would still be relevant, right? Oh, your, absolutely. Yeah, so yeah. Your, your suggestion is put something in, as long as it's in the five pages, put something in that showcases involvement in research and training and pipeline uh, grants and so on, even if they're not right. here. Yeah. Okay. If that's what your grant is about. So okay. if your grant is related to that, then yes. And I'll show you a different example. I'm going to go to that real quick. So this was what I used for grants I just built where we are talking about these things. I'm going to show you another grant that um, I had to submit. Is it this one? Or this one? Here it is. So this was a few years ago where the format was a little bit different, but it needed a personal statement. This was a research grant on which I was a co-investigator. So not PI, I was not co-PI, but a co-investigator. So here, what was required was why am I uh, a good fit in this particular thing, even though I'm not in the top leadership of this grant? And that's why I'm showing this one. So uh, this was a grant which was related to environmental uh, effects and the use of uh, complementary and um, alternative interventions in children, pediatric uh, patients. And this was set in uh, the Philippines. So here I had to show that uh, we're looking at the effect of uh, these environmental and uh, uh, complementary modalities on immunology parameters such as cytokines and T cells. So here I used my background in that. So here I'm a tumor immunologist by training. 
um, again, my doctoral, postdoctoral, and faculty research projects, which are, these are research projects now, revolved around the use of T cells and, you know, again, looking at this B cell regulation. What do I have done? I have used mouse and human models, tumors, lymphomas, allergies, etc., and immunological disorders in children and adults. So I'm hitting this right on, that I have the expertise in exactly what this grant is about. So this is why I have been tapped to work on this. And that this work was funded by the NIH and other, uh, these were cancer-related funding agencies, and what I'm doing currently. So at that time, I was the PI of, uh, funding, uh, of a funded uh, study from the NIH that looked at the effect of music therapy in pediatric patients who were undergoing MRI uh, sedation. So exactly what we were doing, because this matched the specific aims and objectives of exactly what we were doing. So we were going to go in there in the Philippines and measure uh, these cytokines in the saliva of uh, children and as they had been exposed to the environmental agents over time as they became adults. And uh, we were going to measure all of these things. So here it shows exactly that I have done all of these things, therefore I am the person that this team turned to in order to do this. So does that make sense? Uh, that makes sense, and and I what I also got from your answer was yeah. So if I'm a participating faculty on a grant such as the Build Grant now, where I do the summer experience, that's still a relevant experience in terms of if I'm applying for a course development grant and things like that. Absolutely. Yeah. So in your case, um, what exactly are you proposing? You can use that as an example. Um, I'm proposing to. Uh, Re, to develop a uh, and redesign and redevelop a phys introductory physics laboratory for uh, build students, basically, which oh. more relevant to introductory physics for life sciences and the biomedical sciences. Okay, so in your case, I would put in all the things that you had mentioned about your experience with developing pipeline programs, you know, STEM-related. It doesn't have to be biomedical, but that you have expertise in this area. And that is what you're using to develop this curriculum for the Bill students. So you would okay. focus on that. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. So I'm going to close this one and go back here now. So we've already been through positions and honors now, uh, other experiences we mentioned. Uh, the one thing that is also important, I'm sorry, I'm going the wrong way, contribution to science is the next big one. And this, again, is to see exactly what you have uh, contributed to the literature, contributed to, natural, uh, to the national conversation on this. So um, again, not going back too far, but in the last less than 10 years, what we've done. So um, again, given time constraints, we have to uh, space constraints rather than time constraints. We have to see what the best things are. So I picked, again, some things, because this is a training uh, opportunity, what we have done in training. So the first one that I've listed is the NIH grant on the broadening experiences in scientific training that I had talked about. So this is the best funded by the NIH. You know, how we came about getting this grant, what we have done, what the purpose of this uh, grant opportunity is, what my role is here and what I have done. So here you can see exactly what it is. I was uh, the lead author of uh, the first publication that came out of the consortium. Um, this was a joint first authorship among the first five people, and most of the uh, journals now accept that as well. Uh, I in invited, this list has grown, but I don't want to belabor the point too much but all the different presentations I have made in this regard. And then what we have done in terms of uh, these kinds of development activities at Wayne State. So I've given those things as well. Uh, the second big project, again, related to uh, training is our tracking career outcomes. So I've talked about exactly what the purpose of that was, what has happened from that, what are we able to get? 
So all of this describes that particular project. Again, what are the outcomes from that project? So list all of those things that are here. Um, this one now comes to the diversity, because again, what I was submitting for was diversity training. So uh, I've talked about my uh, USU APLU uh, uh, stuff that I have worked on, what we're doing with holistic reviews, because these are all very pertinent. And here again are, our, uh, are my um, contributions to either presentations or publications. And then this is the Bill Grant, which all of you know about. This is another program that we started at Wayne State, which is similar to uh, Build, except this is for uh, getting students into medical school. So I've talked about that here. So those are the primary things, your contribution to science. So if somebody else wants to give me an example, I can tell you, otherwise going back to um, the one we just discussed, Prasad, this was, um, you know, you would put in what all you did for the pipeline uh, and all the other things you've done and give specific examples of presentations that you have made or publications that came out of it and how it advanced knowledge in that area. Great. So questions? I'm realizing that doing it on the streaming is not as much fun as <laughs> it is interactive. But again, I, I'm happy to help on a one-on-one a one -on -one also. If you have questions, you know, you can send your CV, try to put something together and we can match it up. I'm happy to help with that. Okay, so um, research training support. What you have currently and then anything that you want to put in in the past that you've had, if you don't have current or if you have space. I clearly ran out of space, and in fact, uh, it's, it's limited to five pages. I'm going to reformat, obviously, so that those two lines fit, <laughs> fit into the five-page limit, which I think, is, you know, depending on where you project it, it changes a bit. So um, I have my uh, current research support, which is the Bill Grant, the BEST Grant, and uh, if you have space, then you put in uh, grant support completed. You also then put in uh, anything that is pending if you want to do so, if you have space. If you don't have space, don't worry about it. But it is essential if you're co-submitting to a different entity with the same grant, then you absolutely need to do that. So you uh, should make sure you do this. So um, in the training support, what you put in is the agency. Um, what the title of the grant is, the inclusive date, the start date, the end date, what your role is. Uh, so my role is as PI, and I have multiple PIs, and I guess I have to correct Gary Kulik's name spelling in there. But you know, here are the grant, uh, the different, the three linked, the name, the numbers of those grants, so that people can look those up, and then what the goal of this program is. So make sure you put that in so it's obvious to people. So you can see I've done that for this one too, NIH. This is the grant number. Uh, here's my role. Here are the goals. So again, it's very obvious to the reviewers looking at it on exactly what your strengths are. So uh, going back up to the top, you have your educational experience. You have your uh, customized, personalized personalized statement for this particular submission. You have your positions and honors with employment, other experiences, etc. And again, remember this is put them in chronological unless you think they should be linked in some way, which makes more sense to you, that's fine. Contribution to science, no more than five because people don't want to see a whole lot of things. They think that you're being diluted. So just make sure that you stay focused. So again, show your role, uh, publications, presentations, outcomes of this, and then uh, the last thing is your research support, current and past and pending. So that's basically the gist of it. So any questions? Can you unmute everybody? Is everybody unmuted? I unmute only when I have a question to ask, so. Okay. 
Well, it would be nice to just hear from everybody. Should we put in the bill to grant a clear list of listed personnel? Yes. Um, the question is, should we put in the bill grant if you're listed as key personnel? Yes, absolutely. The other question I had was about the um, contributions to science. Mm -hmm. It said that each one of them should not be more than half a page, including the citations. You know, uh, that's because they just are trying to tell you approximately how much space will be needed. But, you know, feel free to, the goal is to, you have five pages. Don't, you know, don't write a book. In other words, but provide the gist of it. Okay, so thank you. But you have to go over half a page, it's fine. So, other questions? You know, I thought that if we had all met in person, we could just look at each other's and come up with something. But I, like I said, I'm happy to help uh, put things together for everybody. You know, if you get your first draft and you share your CV, we can absolutely do that. So any other questions or suggestions or thoughts? Because we're only at 4.30. Yeah. Not just yet. I'm still working on mine, Mr. Prasad. So I appreciate the offer of uh, getting help when we get a little further along. Okay. Great. So if there's nothing else, um, can, I, uh, can I ask about your Section B position and honors? Okay, sure. You had it divided up into. Um, Okay, just other experience in professional membership. All right. Mm -hmm. And the reason I didn't do honors is because, you know, by the time you're at the dean associate level, is, um, you know, it's, it doesn't make sense to put those things in. It's more important to show what else you're involved with. But if you have honors where you've received some awards, you know, teaching award that's relevant, those kinds of things will be helpful. Okay. And uh, I don't know if this has been sent around, but I'm happy to share these documents, my bio sketch. Uh, that would be great. Like to see. Yeah, that would yeah, be really great. It, I don't think it's been sent around. So. Yeah, I'm happy to share those. And uh, I believe this is being recorded as well. So uh, feel free. We will send this around. And uh, again, um, I'm extending the offer to help. So please use me. I'm happy to help. <laughs> <laughs>